Good morning, good morning. God bless you. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. God bless you and keep you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, God is so great and so good. Can we just worship him this morning? Can we just share with the world how wonderful our God is and let the praise begin. Oh, we thank God right now. Let us just take a moment to just lift your hands this morning and worship him and just reverence our God. We have an amazing and amazing God. Praise him, praise him now. Come on in the room, praise him. Praise him, come on in the room, come on in the room. I, I you know, it was a tough getting out of bed. And even though you don't have to drive your car to get to church, I know you want to sleep in a little bit longer, but come on, we got to struggle. You know, sometimes life is a struggle and you don't feel like doing something, but this message right here, it's going to touch your heart. So your heart and your soul, your heart and your soul, your heart and your soul, your heart, and your soul, your heart, and your soul, your heart, and your soul. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on. Will you reverence him this morning? Will you reverence him this morning? Will you reverence him this morning? Oh, we're live. Uh, right now at abundance season and the uh, peacefulness and the safety of your home. And if there's no peace, let us get there. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we, we thank you. We reverence you right now, Father God. Show us your will and your way. Show us what you want us to learn today. Father God, let us not stray, but know that you are the truth and the light. And we're ready for you this morning in Jesus' name. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not going to be long. Um, but this month is National Heart Month. We just finished Valentine's Day. And it's also Black History Month. And so on Tuesday, tune in because I'm we're going to play the uh, Black Card Revolt, which has some really good is uh, history facts that uh, would be nice to know. But one of the things that I shared with you regarding the subject this morning is the Bible talks about your heart a lot. Uh, you know, last week, like I said, we just celebrated Valentine's. This week is National Heart Month. Or not this week, this month. So what's in your heart? That's what we want to explore today. What can we add or remove from our hearts to prevent heart disease spiritually and physically because whatever you have in your heart spiritually or emotionally can have an effect on you physically so let us talk about some of the scriptures that are in the word of god amen psalm chapter 51 verse 10 it says create in me a clean heart O god and renew a right spirit within me. See, right now we have people that proclaim that they are Christians and even pastors. And, you know, um, yeah, I'm going to give some shout, shout out to some folks. Um, and I pray that the right people see this message. Um, uh, newsflash, um, Trump wasn't going to stop abortion. Kamala or Biden or any other president for that matter. If you notice, we as the church must reach one and teach one. We're not reaching the children young enough before they go out and do something that they want to get rid of. We have to teach them about life, life more abundantly. So newsflash, stop blaming the politicians and blame us. We're the reason. We're the reason. Give them a clean heart. 
We've got to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've gotten so caught up into politics like uh, the politicians are the messiahs. No, Jesus Christ. And we as Christians must get up, stand up, reach one and teach one about the gospel. Teach women how to be virtuous women. Teach women the value of life. That's what we need to do. We need to teach. We've got to reach them before uh, they go to a clinic. We've got to reach them before they fall in love with the wrong person. We've got to reach them before uh, someone in the family, incest or or rape, you know, any reason why they would want to discard a child. We've got to teach and reach their heart. No politician is going to stop that. We, the church, must help. And we haven't been doing it. We don't have a solid plan. Uh, We we call people that we know are not murderers, murderers, and God is watching. People that have never touched a gun or even slapped someone or been in a fight, you call them a murderer because of laws, and that's not true. We're the murderers if we do not uh, teach them about love that we allow people to hate. Come on now. Woo! That's when we touch a heart. Reach one. Teach one. That's in Psalms chapter 51. Give me a clean heart. We're not reaching enough for a clean heart. Ezekiel chapter Uh, 36 uh, verse 26 and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you that's adding we've got to add to our family we've got to add to ourselves Ooh, a new heart a clean heart and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh meaning that, that we've gotten so hard against one another and i'm only talking about the body of christ that there's a divide right in the middle if i can do it there we go right in the middle we in the body of christ shouldn't be calling each other left and right we're one that's when you know you're out of touch with the spirit of the most high god when you keep saying the left does this and the right does this you're so far in the world and what The the politicians have fed us that we don't even know right from wrong, left and right. No, there's no left and right. There's only one true God. Yes, there's opinions, but then you need to look inside yourself. What are we doing about it? So when you start talking about abortion to me, I want to know what plan you have because I want to work with you. But if we don't reach the heart of these young ladies out there, amen? Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Think about it. How many times have you said, what sick person would do that? Their heart is sick. Their thoughts are sick. You know, I was watching... Um, Spider-Man and I was watching Legally Blonde Part 2 and they both said the same thing and these movies are about 15 years apart and they said people will believe what we tell them to believe and that's what happened between 2016 and 2020 that people are believing what you hear just on the news you are smarter than that. You know what's fact and what's fiction. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all vigilance. From for from it flows the springs of life. Meaning be vigilant. Know what you allow in your heart. Because, and you've heard me say this on other videos, or you've heard me say this in person, out of the heart. The mouth speaks. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
Father God, purify our hearts, especially after last year, after January 6th, after the divide, after what may have gone on in your house last night. God, purify our hearts. Jeremiah 17, uh, verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind. Ooh, let me repeat that. I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. We got to be careful what we say and how we say it without researching the subject matter. And if you see something that hurts your heart or gets to your heart or makes you angry, ask yourself, can I change it? What can I do to reach one and teach one? Amen. Maybe you couldn't have been in San Antonio or Texas right now because of the weather. And I think it's 73 degrees this weekend there. We still have below freezing temperature here and have had snow on the ground for about three weeks in Dayton, Ohio. But one of the things I'm like, well, I, I can't go to Houston. There's nothing that I can do. But then I heard there was no running water. I heard that um, the grocery stores were um, had empty shelves. I heard that there was no electricity. So you have no running water, no electricity. What are you going to eat? So I said, I can cash app some folks. So I challenge you all to cash app about three people and buy them a meal. It didn't have to be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It didn't have to be a week. But think of someone so that they could get a meal. And one apostle that I sent uh, a cash app to, they said, I am so thankful. I'm going to go out and get me a nice steak dinner. Amen. Little simple things like that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that's a deed that we could do when we don't know what to do. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed spirit. So it talked about a stony heart already, a crushed heart. God is there. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit of the joints and the, ma the, ma the marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. What are the intentions of the heart? We need to know what God wants us to do. And once you begin to focus on uh, what your heart is supposed to be like for God, then you will not let the stones in. You won't be crushed and you won't be brokenhearted over things that are not part of God's uh, plan for your life. I'm angry over the television and angry about things people have said about you that you don't know or angry about a post that somebody posted on your Facebook page. Delete! <laughs> okay. And we know Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, not some of your heart, but all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He shall direct your path. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Stay away from these conspiracy theories and things that uh, got you going so far down south. And I'm not talking about traveling um, to a state down south or Mexico. You know, I'm talking about where your heart has got such divide and division and deceptiveness in it that you're angry at the system, angry at, at people, angry about stuff. And God is saying, come back to me. Because once I give you a clean heart and a new heart, you can discern the things of man and discern the things of me, thus saith the Lord. 
uh, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. I, I just talked about that. That's scripture. Uh, you know, we can look at some politicians. Uh, let's look at Ed Cruz. Here, the Texas is in an emergency, and he's like, hey, I'm going to Cancun and stay in a five-star hotel. What's, what's in his heart to not to step up and say, hey, we got to get this right, to think about the people because he's a public servant. That's just like a pastor not doing anything for the flock in a, an emergency, making sure that there's food on their table, making sure they're okay, their family's okay, checking on them when they're sick. That's what a pastor is supposed to do, helping them with their visions and dreams, making sure that you don't lose sight and the, the wicked that we have seen in this world over the past five years and just uh, six weeks ago. Amen? Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. And I will give them one heart and a new spirit, and I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. Now, if if you go up, I read that exact scripture. So one of the things that I share with you is, um, so in Ezekiel chapter 36, 26, that was the one I read first. Now I just read Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19. So God wants to give us a new heart and a new spirit. Matthew chapter 15, verses 18 through 20. It says this, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat, and then it goes into, you know, where God says, you know, you bless it, you can eat it. But right here, you know, this is where I keep telling you, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if we even just go to the insurrection, you had thoughts of murder, you had thoughts of, of theft, false witnesses and slander, amen? God give us a clean heart. Oh, give us a teachable heart, Lord. First Samuel chapter 16, verse seven. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not a man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So who, who is God talking about right here? He's talking about David. Remember David slayed the giant with five smooth stones? He was picked to be king by God. And so his father is like, oh no, he, he's, not, he's not the one. But then Samuel said, oh no, yeah, he's handpicked by God. So what is in your heart is where God begins to handpick you to do some things. What are you handpicked to do? Hallelujah, glory, glory. Oh, I feel the presence of God in this message right now. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Before I, I read this scripture, I want to say this scripture. James 4, 7, it says, I have submitted myself to God. Therefore, Satan, you must flee from me. So that, James chapter 4, verse 7. So when you you got all kind of demon stuff coming against you. Remind yourself, I have submitted myself to God. I have submitted myself to Christ. So you demon from hell, you, you can't touch me because I have denounced you in the name of Jesus. So then let's look at James chapter four, verse eight. It says, draw near to God. I have submitted myself to God. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. Uh, sanitize your hands. Cleanse your hands. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, 
you double-minded. So let me, I'm just talking to Christians today. I'm not talking to people that don't say they love the Lord. I'm talking to people that say, I'm a believer. This is what this message is about. I'm not talking to, to people that don't know God. I'm talking to people that say, I love the Lord. And this is what God is saying, draw near to God and he'll draw near um, to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. He's saying, you know, I am, I am the truth and the, the way and the light. He is the resurrection, not insurrection. And so when God begins to clear your mind, that double-mindedness, there's no such thing as left and right in the kingdom of God. We're the ones that have to reach one, teach one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 12, verse 33 through 34. Sell your, pos <laughs> Sell your possessions. Y'all ain't gonna like this one. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail. Ooh, I hope somebody just got that. Treasures in the heavens that do not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's a mic drop right there. So this is uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 33 through 34. You know, have you ever sold something so you could give to the poor? Have you not had much yourself and gave to someone that had less than you? That's kingdom building helps you to do that. So your two pennies may not be nothing in your hand, but when we come together, let me share what the abundant season has done. And I'm just going to stop, start at hurricane, uh, the hurricanes from, I think, 2017. I can't even remember. But we gave thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars where all those hurricanes hit at one time. Uh, the one that hit in Puerto Rico, uh, one that hit in the Bahamas, and then uh, one hit in uh, Florida, and one hit in, um, in Hurricane Harvey, which is one of the worst hurricanes. We were able to send um, big funding. So even you may have given two pennies, but somebody else may have given uh, uh, 2000 But when we come together, it's all from abundant season. That's the difference. You may not have $100 to send that bouquet to someone that lost their mother, but you may have given a dollar. Well, it's still from abundant season. You may not have had any money, uh, but maybe 50 cents uh, to give to our food pantry. But you helped somebody eat a steak and potato uh, last week or this week. You see... See, uh, your money in your hands is not much, but you put it in God's hands, it can feed the multitudes. So that's why it says, for where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Our heart is big for people all over the world. And when we put our resources together, we can make sure children have school supplies. We can make sure every family have the biggest Thanksgiving dinner. We can make sure that people have a meal every week. We can make sure that every child has a toy for Christmas. Every child has an Easter basket for Easter. Amen. That's what you do. With the little you have is big in God's hands. That's why we ask you to give. Not only does it help others, but when your need comes, then we wrap our arms around you too. Out of uh, where your treasure is, your heart is. Our heart is for the people. So we give to the people, amen? And we can't be God giving, so he keeps giving back, amen? Matthew chapter 22, verses 37. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord with all 
uh, the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. All your heart. See, that's why we have to do a heart check. So this is a heart examination during National Heart Month. Uh, what What is your heart thinking about right now? You know, is your heart bitter? Is your heart stony? Nothing can get to it. Is your heart um, um, rebellious? Amen. Uh, do you think that uh, you know everything? And so your heart is closed to new ideas. Uh, your heart, it's all about you. No, God is telling us he wants us to have a clean heart, to purify our hearts, to heal the brokenhearted. And he tells us what's in our heart and what comes out of our heart. He talks about what comes out of our heart when it comes to our money. He talks about what comes out of our heart when it comes to our thoughts. He tells us that our heart can make us double-minded. I've covered a lot of scriptures regarding your heart. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and sincere faith. A clear conscience, a good conscience. Psalm 26, verse 2, prove me, O Lord, and try me, test my heart and my mind. And I gave you a very similar scripture in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 10 earlier, where it says, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of their deeds. And so I talked a little bit about what do we do at Abundance Season with the little or the lot that you give. Holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Glorify God Almighty. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 119, verse 10. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Seek him with your whole heart. Oh my God. The, this, this message is so powerful because it's all about the heart. What's in your heart? What needs to be taken out right now? What needs to be added? How you think about things in this world? Is your heart more closer to opinions of this world or what's going on in the word of God in order to mature your heart to a place where it's pure and clean, not crushed and broken. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I live with, uh, excuse me, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives or do, I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I know COVID and other things troubled our hearts in 2020. Jobs, funding. But when we give our heart to Jesus, there's things that he can do that we can't even imagine. <clears throat> Psalm chapter uh, 112, verse 7. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Romans chapter 2, verse 5. But because of your heart and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. What is that saying? That, that you just keep letting stuff in, letting stuff in that's so hurtful that you're going to miss what God is showing you. And being ready, God says, be vigilant and ready. But people have stirred up anger and so focused on the wrong thing. Let us pray together. Let us seek the Lord together. 
Let us continue to purify our hearts together. Let us continue to give together. Let us continue to live for God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 10, verse 10, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. That's your salvation. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Romans 121, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became fruitful in their thinking and in their foolish hearts were darkened. See, dark hearts will make you forget who God is. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, God will give you peace. See, see he's telling you what's in your heart. You, you would have had peace during the pandemic. You would have listened to and used uh, the wisdom of God to make sure your family is protected instead of the opinions of others. And most of the opinions that got this world in a whirlwind, I shouldn't say the world, the United States mostly, is was the opinions of others that had no um, scientific um, experience, no experience with pandemics or epidemics. I remember, and you can go back to March, where this crazy post was going out, I don't wear a mask for myself. I wear it for you. It doesn't protect me. It protects you. That was a bunch of hogwash. And if you look, I kept telling people, you wear the mask for you. And it protects you and the other person. And the reason that that started going around was because that we had a shortage of masks. So what the government was doing early on was trying to get you not to panic. And unfortunately, people died because they believed that, oh, the mask really isn't for me anyway. Wisdom. God will share with you the wisdom so that he will keep you safe. You can't think about left and right and not know what's right. Hallelujah. Oh, Holy Spirit, keep working, keep working. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's just so peaceful in here. We need peace in our hearts this morning. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 14. Blessed is the, excuse me, blessed is the one who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart will fall into calamity. Let us not fall. Psalm 24, 4. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And then in Psalms 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, he knows after he cleans you up and purifies your heart, and you've committed yourself to him, he says here, when you delight in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. And so the moment you know that you desire God, then he knows all of your thoughts. He knows what you need. He knows what you want. And so when you have a pure heart and a clean heart, it also cleans up your thoughts because you're speaking from your heart 
So if you had any kind of addiction and things like that, God's going to take it out. And if you haven't asked him, God, take out these negative thoughts. Take out these, these uh, things that just clutter um, uh, my mind when it comes to the things that I need to do for you. Amen. Acts chapter 8 verse 22, excuse me, Acts chapter 8 verse 22. Repent, therefore, of the wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven. God, give me a clean heart. Give me a pure heart. Father, God, fix my physical heart. Father God, I, I pray against heart disease, spiritually and physically. Psalm chapter 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Those that are redeemed of the Lord, let them say so. Psalm chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 9 through 10, which I kind of quoted earlier, but this is what you need to evangelize as well. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So salvation starts in the heart. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Hallelujah. I hope there's a peace in your heart right now and a peace in your house. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crest, crushed spirit dries up the bones. Don't let nobody crush you right now or ever. Let your heart be filled with joy. And I know certain things where your heart will feel crushed or broken. I know during the loss of my mother 21 years ago, I never thought I'd get over that pain. And now I'm able to talk about her. I can talk about her every day because I remember as a little girl what she taught me. So I share how I became the woman I am today. Amen. She believed in me when nobody else did. Uh, she was my biggest cheerleader. So I, I talk about that. But my heart isn't crushed or broken anymore. And those of you that have lost loved ones, I, I send condolences because it didn't happen overnight. It took about six months to a year before I began to feel normal again. And then in studies, it says, uh, you know, some people from one to five years. After five years, uh, uh, studies show that people can sink into a depression. So get help. If you're not seeing um, the sadness or this feeling of brokenheartedness go away, get help. And guess where you can start with your pastor? Let's talk about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you can feel that peace. Yesterday we talked about waiting. Psalms 27 verse 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So when we we're talking about visions and dreams, don't get ahead of what God is doing. Wait for him. And trust me, he's saying, it's coming. Just wait on him. Let him lead and you follow. How do you allow him to lead? Pray. Be vigilant in your prayer and be uh, vigilant and asking for wisdom and your next steps. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. 
and you shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. That is the Great Commission. So I read the first one from Matthew. This one's from Mark. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30. I love this. A tranquil heart <laughs> gives life to the flesh, but an envy makes the bones rot. Meaning that a peaceful, tranquil, meaning a peaceful heart. But when you have a heart that's begrudging and evil, it can have an effect on your physical heart. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 8. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. Let me read that again. The wise of heart will receive commandments, but a babbling fool will come to ruin. You know, some people, they talk themselves out of the blessing God wants to give them. They may say, oh, I already got that. I don't need that. You know, uh, uh, this may be fine for some people, but, you know, this is just kind of, you know, it's not what I thought it was going to be. Okay. Okay. You never, one of the things that when God takes me to a place where I feel like I'm out of my comfort zone, the first thing I'll do is say, God, why am I here? What do you want me to do? Is it someone that I'm supposed to meet? Am I supposed to, to give? What is it that you want me to do? And sometimes it's just, he wants me to be still and just observe, uh, just to, to have conversations, you know, so we can talk to everybody, whether it's the president of the United States, amen, or someone that's sitting at the bus stop that can't find their bus pass, somebody just stole their wallet, somebody that hasn't had a meal, or just a bottle of water. You may have a bottle of water on you and you just gave somebody a drink that thirst. So ask God why, don't just make a, a, a quick decision. Now, if, if your life is in danger, God will give you quick wisdom for that. But when you are, are someplace that you don't understand, amen? Hallelujah. Giving God the glory, praise God. Amen. So the music I'm playing right now is called God's Heart, and it's instrumental. Um, so, so pray about it. Don't just make a quick judgment decision that things are beneath you or, or they're too good for you. Just say, God, just show me why I'm here. Am I supposed to meet someone? Am I supposed to teach someone? Or am I just here to network and then something along the line may happen years later and you get a call from someone that you gave your phone number to or you took a number and said, I met this person at this function or when I was even at an outdoor event, whatever the case may be, just wait on God before you misjudge why he has you where you are. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. When I, I start looking at the election and all the false prophecies, when you lift someone up too high above God, that's an abomination to him. And what could have been right a year ago, God said, this is not what Christians should be doing. We have to know what a Christian is. 
And today I'm just talking to Christians. Amen. So that was an abomination to God. We need to be careful what we say about people. We as Christians can't call people names. I'm going to talk about the specific issue, but I would never call somebody a murderer and there is nothing in the news that shows that they ever picked up a gun or a knife. That's wrong. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. That is so good. There in the word is telling you, don't argue about your salvation. Show it. Show how you love people. Show how you care. Show how you can make a difference. But if you start cussing and fussing and saying that you save when people say they don't believe in Jesus, then your heart needs to check. Because the devil laughs at that. It's like, yeah, you said you save, right? Uh -huh. God doesn't need you to defend him like that because that's not the way God tells us to defend him in his word. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 10, Therefore I was provoked with the generation and said, They always go astray in their hearts. They have not known my ways. So God is saying, you're going to stray. We've got a generation that's straying right now. There's only 20%, I think, 20% Christians in the world. There's, there's uh, millions that say that they're Christians, but as far as having the Holy Spirit and working in it, um, Studies are showing it's only a half a million, like 500,000 that really believe in the power of the Holy Spirit today in 2021. We got to work on that. So let's stop blaming others for what's happening in the world and seeing if we can teach one, reach one and teach one. Meaning how many are you inviting even on this video right now? Who do you text in the morning and send a link to? Because now is the time to bring more into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 8 verse 39. Then here in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act and render to each whose heart you know according to all his ways. For you, you only for uh, know the hearts of all children of mankind. Hallelujah. Proverbs 6, for, uh, verse 6, verse 14. With perverted heart devises evil. Watch this. Continually sowing discord. You know that one, two people that you see, and every time something comes out of their mouth, it's divide. Whether dividing a country, dividing a family, dividing a workplace, dividing friends. I challenge you today to think of something that will bring a family together, bring friends together, bring a workplace together. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Well, I can keep talking about the heart. A merry heart is good medicine. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Where your treasure is, your heart is. God wants to give you a clean heart, a pure heart. He wants you to get rid of the heart that feels crushed and broken and filled with evil and plotting. Not only does it make your heart tranquil when you do these things, it gives you more peace and more healing. It not only heals, you, heals your soul and your heart uh, spiritually and emotionally, but physically, you know, your heart is healthier. Amen. So thank you for joining this morning. 
If you're out there this morning and you need a pure heart, I'm asking you now just to, to type uh, in the chat area. You need prayer regarding your heart? I would be happy to pray for you. If you need prayer regarding your treasures and how you spend them, remember what I said, a dollar will go a long way with abundant season. So if you haven't given this month, and, and I challenge you just to give one once a month, not every week, just, just once a month, um, because it helps you to say, I've already given from my heart this month. Amen. And then God will make what you give to abundant season grow. We make sure that person that's lost a loved one gets a card. Um, you know, and if you are a tither, you, you get flowers and candy and fruit baskets. Amen? But we want you to give something. God says, given it shall be given unto you. So what's in your heart today? I'm going to continue this message regarding the heart because I believe that you learned so much regarding the scriptures. Powerful, weren't they? Encourage a heart. Strengthen a heart. As I allow the music to play as we close out. Thank you. I see uh, some things coming into the chat area. Hold on just a second. Let me put on my readers. I love God in abundant season. We love you too, Sister Sabrina. And so please, 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 I pray that you can join us on Tuesdays and Zoom. I know you're having a difficult time, but it is so important because we have that dialogue for an hour. And there's so much that's growth that's happening in those one-on-one -on -one sessions where we see you and you can see us. Amen. Um, God bless you. So with that, if there are no prayer requests, remember, pray your master's card every day. And we pray this over the offering every week. And just like with Jesus, he had uh, the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And what he did was he took the two fish and the five loaves of bread. In the basket, he lifted it up. He blessed it. And then when it came down, it was able to feed the multitude. So a little boy's lunch was able to feed 5,000. So the widow's might, as we say, two cents if that's all you have. But if you have a thousand, give a thousand. You've got 500, give 500. But God will take what's in your heart. Amen. And we will put a Deuteronomy 111 blessing on it. We'll put a, a Matthew uh, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold blessing on it. Amen. And so I cannot believe uh, the hour has already gone away. So let us read the master's card together. The master's card, account limit, some 30, some 60, some 100, some 1,000 fold. Matthew 13, 8, 13, 28, Mark 4, 20, and Deuteronomy 1, 11. Unlimited favor is granted to those who believe. Every sin in your past and in your future is forgiven. Romans chapter 10, 9 through 10. Every sickness and, uh, and disease covered by the blood, every debt covered by the blood, every person that hurts you covered by the blood, every need right now and in your future is covered by the blood. Have faith and remember, it is the Lord thy God who gives you the power to get well. This is our abundant season. Ephesians 3.20 and Galatians 6.9. His grace is sufficient. We will love the unlovable, teach the unteachable, forgive the unforgivable, and forget it. Throw it into the sea of forgetfulness to walk in the phenomenal favor of God. We are phenomenal, and we will break every chain. Now use your master's card today. If you ever need prayer, 
You can call this number. Let me put it large on the screen. Amen. Can you see that? I'm going to put this on the screen so you can see it. And never, 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 never leave home without Jesus.